rooms, and if you guys got hit as badly as we did here, I know our weather can be somewhat similar sometimes. I mean, there's some crazy stuff going on this week. Uh, W3OH household, Karen and Jeff Kerr. nervous I'm like of course you know we're gonna get a derecho or something like that is gonna happen when uh, you know when I'm gonna have ladies night what is going on with this <laughs> anyway i um, glad to hear everything's okay there all right over to uh, Miss Lisa at the uh, KB3 WFV household um, I know you guys are, are close to um, to Karen there, so I'm assuming you guys were were all good. Casey to you, F you. Yeah, correct, Carrie. Yeah, same weather, so we're not far from each other, so we didn't have nothing really significant. So 
Um, I know the weekend before it was crazy. You know, uh, Brian and I were trying to pressure wash the house, and uh, we did it on the Saturday, but the Sunday to finish it up was really cold, and it's like we both said, no way were we going to get all soaking wet with that coldness. So we waited to the following weekend and finished it all up. But other than that, so far so good, which is good because we got too many trees around here. It's always scary, but we're good. Yes, I know. That's the, uh, the, the the plus and the minus of having trees. They're great shade. They're good for the house, you know, to keep the sun from beating down on it and everything else. But they're also giant wind sails during the summer months, you know, when they're all full of leaves. My neighbor across the street lost two trees. Um, luckily, they did not hit his house. Um, but all you heard after the storm for, like, the next two days is just chainsaws. That's all you heard is chainsaws. And I even heard them again this morning. So people are still cutting stuff up. So luckily we didn't lose power for very long, but um, that's good. I'm glad everybody's okay. Uh, how about you, Miss Sarah? Um, everything okay so, uh, weather-wise as far as uh, this week in your neck of the woods? Uh, KB3OUK from KC2UFU. Yeah, everything here has been pretty calm, at least at my house now. Um, there was, the other day, I think it was Thursday, I heard, I think an alert on my phone, there was like a, a severe thunderstorm warning or watch, or I can't keep straight what's a warning or a watch, what the difference is there. But, um, so I heard, I'm looking at a pretty good storm, and like, we haven't had hardly any rain, you know, lately, and we could really use some. Um, in my house we didn't get any, but I heard of people like 10, 15 minutes from my house that got a lot of hail and had some damage to like cars and stuff. Um, I saw videos of people that live not too far from us, um, posting online videos of the hail coming down. It just looked like a snowstorm. And we maybe got a little drizzle, but not hardly any rain, which we could actually use some rain. Shelby planted a little bit of a garden last weekend, and we've been waiting on some rain to help that, but we haven't gotten anything, but no damage or anything, thankfully, and, um, so yeah, things are good here, but, you know, we could use a little rain, but we haven't got any damage. KB3 OUK. No, oh, very good. Well, I'm glad to hear everybody, uh, made it through that, um, or didn't have to experience it, because it was a little unnerving. Um, i going to take a minute here and uh, see if there are any other ladies that would like to check into Ladies Night 3.0. This is KC2UFU. Hello, KC2UFU. This is Tanya, W3TKP, saying hello. Hello, Miss Tanya. We have missed you so much. Uh, glad to hear your voice. Um, how did you guys make out? Did you guys have any, uh, issues with the, with the storms in the past week? No, not really. I mean, it was typical thunderstorms, that kind of thing, but nothing serious. The scariest thing that happened through the storm was the fact that we had a giant snapping turtle come through the yard. What? A giant snapping turtle. And was that was that just because um, of the wet conditions, or he just was passing through? It was actually a female coming through, trying to lay eggs. But we have a pond with our painted turtles in it, which I absolutely love. I want to protect. So I was so nervous about this thing. It was actually the size of, we have a rhino. It was the size of Texas. <laughs> it was the size of the tire rim slash tire on the rhino. It was huge. It looked like it weighed 35 pounds. Scared me to death. Yeah, snapping turtles are nothing that you ever really want to deal with. I mean, even little box turtles, if they decide to get feisty, you know, can, can, can nip at you. But a, a snapping turtle is exactly what it sounds like. I mean, I've actually seen them 
on my mother-in-law's property. She has a, a creek that runs through her property, and the snapping turtles, the females, come up and lay the eggs, you know, in the spring. And actually trying to, like, guide it so that it wasn't going too close to the house because she has little dogs <laughs> that it could possibly eat. We, like, took a branch and we're, like, trying to guide it. And this branch was probably about two and a half inches thick. And she latched onto it, and she just she just snapped it right in half. Like, imagine if that was your hand or your fingers or your toes. Yeah, snapping turtles are no joke. So uh, I'm assuming you, you relocated her or, or she went away? Yes, she definitely went away because I'm worried because we have ducks. We have three ducks at the time, like right now, and they go down to the pond every day, and I'm worried about them getting their legs snapped off. So, she was not a good thing. So, she went away. Okay, and we'll leave it at that. She went away. <laughs> Ken, you're terrible. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Oh, man. So, that's... uh. That's definitely different, you know, snapping turtle coming through. All right, so Miss Tanya's here in the group, and uh, let's see if anyone, any other ladies, would like to check in for the Ladies' Night 3.0. This is Casey to UFU. Okay, we'll check again later. So... My next question, and uh, Karen, you're you're on, uh, you're up. So just so you know, so I don't catch you off guard too much. Um, I'm wondering how everybody feels about things starting to loosen up with the whole restrictions. I know I am not thrilled about it. I mean, nobody wants to be running around with face masks on. We know that. You know what I mean? It's they're annoying. It's like basically like wearing a bra on your face all the time and when you take it off your face whatever you're like oh thank god but you know it's just something that we have to do um it's it's got me a little little bit on edge i think because just yesterday we got a report that they closed down one of the local restaurants that was doing takeout only um, they closed it down. It's going to be closed down for a couple of weeks because somebody there that was preparing the food there, you know, came down with the coronavirus. So I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm just still a little up in arms in it. I don't, I don't know where you guys are in each of your, uh, prospective locations as far as, um, you know, whether there's, uh, you know, all the numbers seem to be going down everywhere, but then we just had Memorial Day weekend, and they kind of opened things up a little bit, and they said, oh, hey, you know, you can have 20 crazy and uh, of course Laura Kathy you know you guys have to weigh in on this too this is uh Casey too you love you I don't, Karen. Uh, sorry Carrie uh, if you don't mind to jump in I was watching their live stream and I don't see anybody at the operating position Oh, you mean the girls have abandoned me? Um, it, uh, it, it, it appears that way. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll have to make it back around. Well, I'm glad they're having a live stream, because at least you know what's going on. Thank you, Perry. I appreciate that. Perry, great guy. My technical advisor there and, uh, you know, stream specialist. Um... So let's, uh, how are you feeling about it, Priscilla? How are you feeling about them, uh, loosening the reins a little bit? Casey, to you, love you. Hi, Carrie. I think it's about time, but I'm a little nervous. People should be wearing their masks, I feel like, when they go out. I know some people just don't know how to wear their masks. They don't put the mask covering their noses. Or some of them have the mouth, the nose cover, but not the mouth. 
So it's just a little concerning to me. I feel like we still can use some, you know, social distancing rules in place, even though we're opening things up. So it feels pretty good that things are opening up, but still I wish people would practice some safe measures to keep everybody, everybody safe. Yeah, it's almost like if, if you start lifting something, it's like everybody just like, it becomes like reckless abandon. <laughs> And I've seen that. I see a lot of people walking around with it just covering their mouth. Like, it can come out through your nose, too. You know, sneezes come out through your nose. So, I don't really know why. Um, you know, and I was kind of afraid of that, too. Because, that, I mean, even at the height of it, there was people that were not quite, you know, following the rules. And to the to the store where I work or whatever and, and they're actually getting they get like annoyed. You know, they're like, oh, really? All right, I'll pull my mask up. It's like, yeah, we're not kidding. None of us want to get sick. But anyway, um yeah, so so you're kinda in the same boat with me. Kinda wish they would um you know follow the rules a little bit more because we certainly don't want it to come back around and bite us. Um over to you Miss Lisa uh, at the K B three W F V I mean I know you guys. Um, how are you feeling about them? Uh, Yo, Connor. Connor. What are you talking about? About. I don't see any any digital crap happening. Happening. Because it's getting busier, so getting busier and, and trying to deal with, with a little one too at the shop is a little hard. But uh, great grandma has chimed in Friday, so she helped us a little bit there. So um, it was good. I uh, can't wait. I'm hoping within a week or two that we care will happen because I think they're slowly um, doing that phase here at, at Maryland anyway. So hopefully that'll come soon, but all is well. Yeah, well, that's all that we can hope for is that it's, you know, all goes well. But you're right, it is nice. We here in New Jersey still have not opened up um, the hair salons. So you can imagine, you know, when Ked said, uh, oh, maybe we'll shoot a little video or something like that or whatever. I'm like, really? Because, you know, I haven't had a haircut in three months. <laughs> But, you know, got to be a good sport about it. So what are you going to do? Um, so um, it does feel good to be able to go into stores that you haven't been able to be in in a little while, though. You know, and I can't wait to be able to get, like, a real haircut. One that I haven't done myself because I've done a couple of those already. And you can just imagine by the time I actually get to the salon, you know, my hairdresser, she's going to be like, mm, you used... KP in the group. This is Casey to UFU. I don't mind everything's opening up again, but I personally don't like leaving the house anyway, so it makes no difference to me. Um, if I didn't have to go out and get medicine for Michael or cigarettes, I would never leave the property. So, eh. Man, you've got it made. Medicine or cigarettes for Michael. <laughs> Just send him out. <laughs> and you never have to leave. You have your own happy little oasis there. 
so um, that's good. And of course, I hopped out of turn because I'm just I'm trying here, but <laughs> I missed you, Miss Sarah. Um, how are you feeling about it? And um, I know, I mean, you have the little one and everything. What What are you doing, like, as far as like doctors and stuff like that with her? I mean, I'm sure she's probably due for some of her shots and stuff. Uh, KB three O U K KC two U of you. Yeah, so here, um, things are kind of opening up. It's been kind of slow. We're, so, like, Pennsylvania, we had the red, yellow, and green phases. Um, our county is now in the green phase as of yesterday, I think. Or maybe that was last week. No, I think that was yesterday. Um, so I think now we're allowed to, like, go out to eat and stuff. Um, we haven't really yet. Um, and then there's some stores that still are trying to make you wear a mask depending on who you talk to. Some stores, um, are okay if you don't. Now, today, the rent of the store, Shelby and the baby sat in the car, and I went in and they had a sign up, you know, that the state recommends that you wear a mask, but they're not making you. They can't turn you away if you don't, so... Personally, I'm tired of wearing masks everywhere, so I said, okay, I'm not going to. You know, as long as I don't have to, I'm just not going to. Um, so I like being able to breathe, and I'm just not afraid of catching it. Um, now, with taking her to the doctor and stuff, they, I mean, I'm still, I know some people that have little ones right now that are like, oh, well, I'm not taking my kids to the doctor or whatever. Um, we're keeping her appointments and yeah she's been getting some shots and things like that so we've been able to keep her appointments um you know keep her on schedule that type of thing so she is all up to date um we went for her four month checkup not this week but last week and they took my temperature we went in like we went in the door and they asked if we'd been exposed to the virus and asked a couple questions and then they took my temperature um, just to make sure I didn't have anything, and asked some questions, and they even said, oh, if you want to you could be entered into a raffle to win a free mask, and I said, that's okay, give it to somebody that needs it. Um, so for me, we can get back to normal anytime now. I've kind of been sick of being stuck at home with my baby, not able to go out and do anything. Um, and Shelby's really minding that all he gets to do is go to work and come home. Uh, so it'll be nice to open things up and get back to normal, especially with the little one. KB3 OUK. How strange is that to kind of commercialize, enter a raffle? Did you ever in your life ever think you would hear, enter a raffle to win a free mask? That's the new now now? <sighs> I'm trying to get a grip on things, like trying to figure out what everything's going to be like, and, uh, it always seems to, uh, like it caught by surprise. That one definitely caught me by surprise. Um, enter a raffle to win a free mask. Well, I guess, uh, that goes to show you could try and capitalize on anything, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, what's next? Uh, let's see if, uh, Miss Karen has gotten back to the microphone there, and then I will see if anyone else wants to shoot in. Uh, W3OH, this is Casey Chay. You are, you are your ladies back. I've lost them. They're off giggling somewhere. That's what's happening. But that's okay. Oh. Uh. Let's see. Test, 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 test. test. Is the audio blown out on the stream when I do this? Good evening. I always have to say I was up to the last minute quite nervous about that. But, um, you know, other than some static crashes, it seems like uh, we're doing okay this evening. Um, so... We we'll wait for uh, Miss Karen to get back and um, we'll see if there's any other check-ins. Is there anyone else here who'd like to check in? Can you see two you of you? Well, 
Well, since nobody else is checking in, I loved your bear story. We actually have two bear dens on our property, and the one had two babies this year, which were right next to our pond, which was interesting because it was a little scary. Yeah. See, now for you, I, I guess, I mean, that's so not normal. Where you are, where we are. You do not have bear at the local McDonald's hanging out in a tree. And this was this was a full-grown, and I'm assuming a male bear, because, I mean, this time of year, um, if it was a female, there would be babies, you know, with her. And this guy, he is literally, it's kind of like a Where's Waldo type situation right now. Like, you just keep seeing on Facebook or you get these alerts, you know, bear in your area, bear here, bear there, you know? And when I tell you there has never been a bear roaming around the outskirts of our entire county that I know of, I mean, they do live here, but they're... They tend to be, you know, deep in the woods and don't really interact with humans. So to have, you know, a big old black bear hanging out, you know, right next to the highway, you know, looking for a Big Mac was a little odd. I keep forgetting you live near the Pine Barrens. So, yeah, it's probably not common. But here, they're here. They have their rotation around the property. Um, they were here just recently. The next time they'll be around is 4th of July. It always happens the same time every year. They have a pattern because they go out to feed and then come back again. And it's crazy, but I know their schedule, which is weird. Well, just... To give you a highlight of how ill prepared they were for a bear to show up here in our county, much less our town, is that, well, they used police sirens to try and, you know, to kind of scare them back into the woods. So, first of all, he wouldn't get hit by a car, and also so he wouldn't, you know, interact with people really. Um, but they, could, they couldn't tranquilize him to move him because. Because they don't deal with bears here. So, I guess uh, that'll be uh, put on the list for uh, the townships, you know, that everybody will have to have a bear to make <laughs> Only because they don't generally, they, they don't come out here. And this guy, he's he's very bold. He's very, like they've said, I mean, he's been just about and he actually covers quite a large area in a very short period of time. He just keeps popping up everywhere. I think they, I think they didn't nickname him Waldo. Carrie, we don't have bears, but we do have turkeys. They are such a nuisance. They pick themselves up and walk together in groups, and they are just, I don't know what to say about these turkeys. They take over the neighborhood. Kind of like neighbors, but that wouldn't be fair. And then also regarding haircuts, I got the world's worst haircut during COVID-19. They cut my hair without cutting it at all, so now I look like Rod Stewart, but with curls. I have a mullet. It's really atrocious. I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> oh, well, all, all in the name of being able to see for an hour eight <laughs> And oh, I'm very familiar with turkeys. Turkeys we have a lot of. Actually, we had turkeys in the garage uh, one year. He was a, a, a young uh, Tom turkey. And he didn't want to leave the garage. He went in the garage, and he did not want to come out. So he was, you know, running around, pooping all over the place, and just making, yeah, Ken's looking at him, you know, Ken's, you know, picturing him just like you would picture a Looney Tunes, you know, like he's seeing drumsticks in a body, you know what I mean, when he's looking at them, and uh, they were eyeing each other up, um, I mean, eventually we did get him out of the garage, but um, they, they are fairly common around here, and they can be quite a nuisance, especially when they decide to run in packs, and, um, you know, walk along the streets all puffed up, and peck at your uh, your car windows and your mirrors and stuff like that. So 
I get that, so I, I know how they can terrorize a neighborhood. Also, we had a technician once at the copy company where I worked who showed up late to work one day because he was hit by a turkey on the highway and it totaled his car. Really? Yeah, they do get, they do get pretty big. <laughs> Turkeys. That, that is crazy. Mm. You ever, you, have you ever had any, um, crazy wildlife, uh, Lisa, come into, uh, your world over there? Oh, gosh, we have a lot, even though, yeah, we have a turkey. We have fox. The fox is funny because, have you ever heard of fox? Uh, I guess it's their mating calls. They are really scary. They sound like a wild peacock or something. <laughs> or a child screaming. But uh, I remember the daughter was out uh, in home late. You know, she was talking to her boyfriend before he left. And all of a sudden, you heard the... <laughs> I came down the driveway. It was in the fox in the background. She hightailed her little hiney in her bedroom so fast. It was so funny. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We have uh, deers and, and all. No bears, not yet anyway. Yeah, yeah. Foxes, I mean, you see them in the pine barrens, but not generally in people's neighborhoods. Raccoons, of course, everybody has to deal with them. They're little masterminds and masks. They can, uh, they can really, uh, do some damage, but, um, uh, is it, are they red foxes down there, or, or, or gray foxes, uh, Lisa? I think, well, what, have, what I've seen sometimes, and running in the back, sometimes I'll catch them running way in the back there, he's a red fox. Yeah, they're, they're, they are beautiful, they're, they're, they're cute, they are they're like coyotes. They're a whole nother story, because, well, they don't generally come into our neighborhood, but, uh, like, the guys like to go out riding all the time out in the woods and stuff like that, and you hear them guys all the time, and, and they're, they're so eerie, because you hear them yipping in one spot, and then you hear a yip all the way on the other side, and you know that there is several pairs of eyes hanging out seeing what you're up to. Like coyotes, I mean, as you know, they're not as dangerous as, as wolves, but they're certainly not a fox either, so the coyotes they have me a, a, a little unnerved sometimes. <coughs> but yeah, so I guess we all uh we all have uh stuff we have to deal with. Um Sarah, do you, do you ever worry about because I know you have your little your little sheep out there. Test, test. test. I want to see if the audio on the stream is getting any RF in it. In the yard here, um, and we have, you know, the deer and um, we'll say turkeys every now and then. Right now, my cat is watching out the door, listening to the birds. There's a bunch of birds outside. Um, and we do have some coyotes that we hear and see every now and then. Um, when we were dating, one night Shelby and I were walking in the one field, and we thought we heard a noise, and Shelby got all scared that there was a coyote out there. And his grandmother also, um, if you'd mentioned coyotes when she was older, and before she died, she would be scared of them. If you'd mentioned coyotes, you, she'd, she'd get all fired up. Um, well, since we have all the animals here, we don't really get too much in our yard, uh, just in the field, except for the new barn and everything, but, uh, so far I don't have anybody coming and trying to get my sheep or anything, thank goodness. KV3 of UK. Oh, well, that's good, because you always think of that, we have, uh, domestic animals, and, uh, you know, I mean, even, you know, I own a pit bull who is, like, really just, she's just a thing. She's like, oh, pit bull or whatever. She's no match for a bear. She would take it on. I have no doubt about that. I mean, that 
definitely not shy away from it, which would actually be scarier, you know, unless you try to take on something that weighs, you know, six times as much as she does. Um, so, you know, apparently they just really don't belong around people, but you do feel bad for them because, I mean, if he's down here and he's wandering around out here, it's probably because somebody just decided to destroy his habitat, and that's, you know, not living directly out in the wilderness and you're starting to get this kind of wildlife um, in your area that you don't usually see, you know it's because of all the construction that's going on. And that's kind of, uh, you know, that, that's really sad because it's just they have no reason to, to destroy all of their habitat. I wish that, um, you know, we do have the Pinelands Commission and stuff like that, but it just seems like um, you know, people find ways to get around it and, you know, they're just destroying more and more of their habitat, which is, is just such a shame. And we're encroaching on them. They're not encroaching on us. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Miss Karen, uh, W3OH, are you back? This is KC2UFU. having fun. She's having ladies night and girls night all in the same, all at the same time. So that's pretty awesome. Um, what else? Uh, did, did anybody else have anything to uh, add as far as uh, our, our animal stories? I'd like to say hi to Tanya. Hi Tanya, KB3WFEYL. It's good to hear you. Just stepped away. She'll be back in two minutes. She's running to the bathroom. She'll be right back. I'll tell her you said hello, Lisa. Hi, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, really. You know what? Go, go around and uh, say hello to everybody. I mean, I'm always, uh, you know, I'm kind of like the, the net mom here or whatever and trying to keep a little organization there. But, of course... Um, you know, everybody is always free to talk to each other and comment and, and everything else. I don't want to seem like it's got to be so structured, you know. We're just a bunch of girls hanging out after all. It's hard to hear Hi, Lisa. Sorry, I missed you. I'm back now. It's really nice. I can hear Tanya pretty well. And it's really nice to hear everybody out here. Regardless of whether it's conditions or interfering. I'm able to hear pretty well. I do have a concern about an animal. I have a cat named Goober who is at least a $5,000 cat based on her vet bills and all kinds of things that we've been through with her. And she gets outside and I worry about her with the turkeys and I worry about her with the coyotes and I worry about her in general. She's seen everywhere with the neighbors and I can't control her. She goes where she goes and does what she does, and she loves to go out. I can't keep her indoors, but uh, just wondered what you had thoughts on about that. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things about having indoor, outdoor, or animals that are just outdoor. Like, I know people that have chickens and stuff like that, and they have to worry about the foxes and, and the wild animals and everything. So, I, I can understand that would be pretty scary. Hey, Lisa, Tanya's back. Hey, yeah, I heard. Hi, Tanya. How you doing? Very good. How are you? Oh, we're hanging in there. Trying to, anyways. It's good to hear you, Tanya. I'm glad you're here. We've missed you, Tanya. That was terrible. <laughs> Let me, uh, let me make sure I have it. Okay, um, I just want to check with Perry real quick, uh, if you're there, Perry. How, how are we doing as far as, uh, I see the static crashes are increasing. Is, uh, is everything okay on your end there? Oh, yeah, everybody's coming in fantastic. 
uh, here in the southeastern Pennsylvania. Then it crashes. It just got really bad out of nowhere. They were, you know, fairly, uh, fairly distant. And then all of a sudden, here we go. But uh, everybody's still coming in uh, very strong here. I'm not having a problem with anybody. The uh, the live stream is going good. Uh, here, streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, the AM window, twitch.tv slash the AM window. If you go on YouTube and search uh, the AM window, you can find the live stream there uh, as well. And all, with all they always get automatically uploaded and recorded on YouTube forever. Well, as long as, I guess, YouTube wants to keep them. <laughs> so, and on Facebook, if you're a Facebook person. So, that's the story on that. But now, to answer your question, Carrie, in a very long and drawn out Connor, man. Uh, response, Thanks for this prime the prime sub. are not a problem. My man. I appreciate it, Paul. Okay, good to know. Well, I've always said um, that AM is, you know, it's a wonderful mode. I love operating AM. Um, but AM is like a woman. It's completely unpredictable. You just never know. Though it sounds beautiful, I see. Damn, you know, homie, two months. Voice out there across the Damn. airwaves. You just Fist never know what it's going to do next. Damn. So, sounds like a woman to me, doesn't it? <laughs> um. All right, ladies. So, here is my uh, my my last uh, question of the evening that um, I wanted to ask you because this was something I was thinking about because. I, uh, you know, with the whole bears and, and the, the storms that I've been going through and everything, things that, like, really scare me. Like, I've always been terrified of, uh, you know, tornadoes. Luckily, we don't ha really have them in this area. And I'm always worried when there's thunderstorms at night because, you know, with a tornado, it's like you have to see it coming. <laughs> so that got me thinking about phobias. Everybody is afraid of something. And I'll start, I'll tell you that I'm terrified of heights. And I don't know if that's just because I'm only five feet tall and everything. I have to climb everywhere to get stuff. <laughs> or, um, you know, what the reason behind it is. But I'm terrified of heights. And I'm also claustrophobic. Which I really think, you know, to thank my sister for since you know she always used to like to lock me in the closet when I was little it was like you know she's my big sister so she you know just did stuff like that and I don't know if that's why I'm claustrophobic but anyway it always is uh, a lot of fun if you travel with me on an airplane since you know I'm claustrophobic and I don't like heights you can just imagine I'm, I'm such a great traveling companion just in case anybody ever thinking they might want to get on a flight with me. <laughs> I'm a lot of fun. But uh, I'm going to send this over to... I'm going to send it... Well, let me see if Karen's back. If Karen is not back, then um, Priscilla at uh, K1GTX, you go ahead and pick it up. So let's see if Karen and the ladies are back to the microphone. And the question was, what is your fear? What is, what is your phobia? Is it bugs? Is it... What is it? Why does they don't bother me? I, I, unless they're June bugs, because those things are pretty scary. But other than that, I can deal with bugs. Uh, W3OH in the group, Casey, to you, up to you. Okay, uh, over to you, Miss Priscilla. K1GTX, Casey, to you, up to you. Hi, K1GTX. Uh, this is Priscilla. I am afraid of... Well, actually, I'm kind of a dude, so I'm afraid of people. <laughs> that's why I enjoy these sessions, because I feel like I can communicate with you guys, and, and I feel like I can express myself, and I don't feel so afraid. Thank you very much, Gary. Well, you were doing a great job. Let me just tell you that. I'm so glad to hear you come back and, uh, you know, you're really getting to be like a, like, like a pack of girlfriends. I'm always excited to, to hear, uh, you know, who's going to be on and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, everybody's having a lot of fun. 
I always have a lot of money, so. Oh, uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's good. How, how about you, Miss Lisa? Do you have any phobias? Is there something that you're afraid of? And do you have any idea why? See, I think I figured out mine. You know, maybe it's because my sister. I don't know. But, uh, everybody's got some PC to you of you. Yeah, I don't like snakes. Um, and we've had a couple in here. So I'm, I'm getting a... <laughs> I'm getting used to them because I finally got a grabber. And I, I used it last year and, and threw them out in the woods. But, um, mm -mm. no, uh, I, don't, I don't like them. I wish I don't have to even try to grab them and throw them in the woods. But, uh, uh, I don't, I don't like them. I don't want them here. There's plenty of room out in the woods, but um, sometimes when they're too big, I had one that was really, really big, and I had to call my son-in-law, um, and he finally got it out, but boy, that was a little bit of a struggle, because where he was was a little bit of a tight fit, but um, no, I don't like snakes. None at all. Do you get um, venomous snakes by you, like rattlesnakes and stuff, or is it just, uh, you know, mostly black snakes and garter snakes, or do you not even care, venomous or not? You just don't want anything to do with them. Yeah, I don't care what they are. I don't like any of them. Um, but we do have copperheads here. Um, I think we saw one once a long time ago in the driveway. Um, but other than that, they have been black snakes. Um, but some of them black snakes can get really long and big. Um, but I think we finally figured out how they were coming in downstairs and, and took care of that. But uh, these darn birds sometimes want to make a nest around the deck. And, of course, they want to get those eggs. And so they come up on the deck. So I, I now have to get the birds. I, I shush them away. And sometimes I mean I have to just break down their nest. I hate to do that, but I, I don't want them snakes on my deck. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, I'm not, uh, per se, afraid of snakes, but, like, they can stay outside, away from the house. That that would be better for me. Although, you know, if you have a snake in the neighborhood, there's no mice. There's no mice to be seen. You never have to worry about them. We once had, uh, we had a mole. Of all things, a mole that decided to come into the house. I have no idea. Apparently, you know, because they're blind, it had made a scent trail and managed its way to, to slip under the door of the, uh, where we have the shack here. And that little sucker just kept, like, he just, like, had this little pattern where he'd go in and out. We finally, um, captured him, and we had... <clears throat> what the kids called at the time, the mole relocation program, <laughs> which was basically them and Ken taking it in the truck and, you know, bringing it out somewhere. There's there's quite a few things here that we've had to trap and uh, get rid of the, uh, what are those, not woodchucks, what are those things? Oh, the groundhogs. But they're, you know, they're, they can be a nasty piece of business, groundhogs. They're, they're not really any joke. Because we've had to trap a couple of them, and they hit, they hiss, and they spit, and they bite at the cage. I definitely, uh, you know, wouldn't want to have to deal with one outside of the cage, that's for sure. So, no snakes for Miss Lisa. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. And, uh, how about, uh, you, Miss Sarah? You're, you're pretty tough. Yeah, I, I, I consider you tough as nails, but... I'm sure, I'm sure there's got to be something that makes you a little crazy. KB's Real UK, KC2UF here. I definitely do not think of myself as tough. Um, considering people, like, a week ago, um, like, we were getting ready for bed, and, um, I looked, I didn't have my glasses, and I saw this thing go, like, across the floor. It was this big black spider. And I'm like, Shelby, and he goes, what? I said, come here. Like, he should know by now that I don't like spiders. But needless to say, anytime I find one and I call for him, you know, I'm like frantic. And he gets kind of like, okay, you know, puffy about it. I'm like, just come take care of it, please. And, you know, flush it, get rid of it. And, you know, before it goes away and then you can't find it. Um, 
mixed reviews on snakes. Like I can, if I have a shovel, I can, you know, kill snakes, but then the whole, like, them crawling around and, like, you know, moving while dead, that freaks me out. So then, like, I can kill them, but then I have trouble, like, getting rid of them. Um, and I also do not with mice. So, yeah, I, I don't really think my health is tough, but, um, yeah, I don't know. KB3, okay. Yeah. They don't belong in the house. I mean, I can get rid of them or whatever. I actually, I have a girlfriend whose husband is terrified of spiders. Like, he is outright terrified. And she is the one that has to, or he doesn't like bugs at all. And she's the one that has to deal with it all the time. Like, you know, put on the big boy pants and go and take care of whatever bug is in the house because he is absolutely terrified of them. I mean, I guess that's kind of like, you know, why we think that way, why why it's the man's responsibility to get rid of the bugs and the snakes and the, you know, whatever the problem thing is. I guess that's kind of, you know, like a, a stereotype or whatever, but um, I don't know. If I don't have to deal with it, I'd rather would not deal with it. Um, how about you, Miss Tanya? Other than, than your fear of what Mike is going to bring into the yard next, do you have any other fears? Casey, to you, of you. Yeah, it is getting loud. Oh, Miss Tanya, are you there? KC2UFU, look at you. W3TKP, KC2UFU. Yes, I'm here. So, you want to hear my fears? Okay. Hi. Definitely uh, airplanes, second, and getting on the air. <laughs> it's my third fear. But you're here. Well, you're third, but but you're really your first fear is what Michael's going to bring home next, right? What? <laughs> you know, like what he's going to bring into the driveway next. You know, a bus, a plane. Actually, he was trying to get a hel helicopter on the property. No, I can't do that. We have a bus camper, all kinds of other stuff, but yeah, no, not my thing. Why did he want a helicopter? Because it was there, and it's available, but he was trying to bring it onto the property to make it work, which was scary to me, because he doesn't have a ton of places. It's from the VFW folks. They needed somebody to yeah, I was afraid he was going to make it work, and he's being a backseat driver over here. Don't like it. Back off, Michael. Don't make me come there. This is ladies' night. Give her a break. Stand down, man. Stand down. <laughs> oh, it's just, uh, let's check real quick and see if, um... If Karen is coming back or not. I don't know. She may just be having... She's just hooting it up with the girls over there. Uh, W308, Miss Karen, are you there? Casey, to you, up you. Okay, I guess not. She's, uh, she's tearing it up with the other ladies, and that's absolutely fine, too. Um... Well, I just want to say, ladies, I, this is just, so I look forward to this. I get nervous about it every time. It's almost time to do it. And, uh, you know, because I always want to make it fun and exciting. And uh, I love to hear you guys out here. And um, I'm so glad you guys keep coming back. We um, actually um, were recognized by uh, Ham Nation if you guys know what that is, it's a, um, you know, a big, big uh, amateur radio program. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, they were talking about us a little bit on their, on their ladies night they had this past week. 
and uh, you know what we're doing here and, and, and getting all the ladies out on the radio. So I thought that was that was uh, really cool. Um, you know that uh, that we're doing a good thing here, and and and, and I love hearing you guys. Um, let me uh, let me send this around and. Uh, Static crashes are getting bad, so so I definitely you know want to get everybody in and uh, before it gets too bad because they are getting worse. So I'm gonna send this around. Uh, let's start with you, Miss Lisa, and um, by any means, even even when Ladies' Night, you know, when when we wrap it up here, it doesn't mean you ladies have to go. You know that. But uh, over to you, Miss Lisa, and uh, let's tie it up here. This is KC2 UFU for the Ladies' Night 3.0. Yeah, the fat patches are bad. It is getting tricky here. Okay. So I guess they're looking at the But it's fun. I like it. I'm getting used to it. And, uh, I think I can sometimes play with the billing first. I think it's, it's a good thing. I don't know what's wrong with here. Sometimes I'll say hello. If they like that, they'll say yes. But they probably like, damn. We're not taking over all the stuff that we like to do. <laughs> but sorry, us women always push and shove our way through. Yeah, well, when all this nonsense is over, you know, with the coronavirus and all the other crazy things that are going on, we will all get together. I don't know where. We'll find a, uh, a nice central location. And, uh... All of us ladies will get together and then it'll really get crazy. Um, alright, so, uh, uh send it over to the phone because I know, uh, that everything is, I don't know, it's getting hard to hear, but, um, the static crashes are getting crazy. Um, thank you for joining us again and, uh, we really enjoy hearing you here. I feel like we're all, uh, just a bunch of gals now and, uh, go ahead and, uh, and wrap it up there. Uh, K1 GTX, can't see can you you. Hi, Gary. Uh, just to say that I would be terrified about helicopters. I took a helicopter ride over Sao Paulo, Brazil, with my ex-husband. And it was a terrifying experience, and I can really relate to how that would be weird thing to have in your backyard, a helicopter. And uh, thank you very much for hosting this. It's been really great. And I'd love to get together with everybody. Hope to hear from you guys soon. And next time at least. Yep, and I'll definitely keep you guys posted. Uh, just in case you guys want to jot it down somewhere. But I will email you ladies. Um, we're going to do this again. Uh, Saturday, June 20th. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, as long as um, the conditions hold up for us, uh, you know, no thunderstorms or anything going on. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's my backseat driver. He couldn't help himself. <laughs> All right. Uh, over to you. Uh, over to you, Miss Sarah. Uh, this is KC, uh, KB3OUK from KC2UFU. Thanks again for joining us this evening. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for hosting another wonderful ladies' night. And it's been great to join all of you. Thanks for having me. And the little one has been sleeping through all this static. I can't understand how she does it. Um, but yeah, it's been a good evening. And good to hear everybody. Looking forward to the next one. KB3OUK. Very good, and we look forward to hearing you, too. Get our little, little group here. And, uh, over, over to you, Miss Tanya, W3TKP from KC2UFU. And you shouldn't make this one of your fears, because you're awesome at this. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure tonight, and I love it, and I hope... I will show up next time. And I also wanted to comment and tell you that you sound a thousand times better on the radio than Mike does. 
agree. All right. And uh, one more check for Miss Karen. Karen? Calling Karen. All right, she's ho hooting it up with the ladies, and that's just fine, too. Um, so set your calendars, ladies. Uh, Saturday, June 20th, same time, same channel, same channel, I'd say, same frequency. And um, I just want to, uh, real quick, uh, just I want to thank Perry for uh, doing all the recording and stuff, and also thank all the husbands in the background who make this part of this happen because you make sure the radios are good and everything's going on so us ladies all we have to do is sit down and operate so even if you are in the background there and uh you know thank brian kb3wfb because he is awesome moral support for when i'm freaking out and saying i don't know what we're going to talk about and he's like you'll do fine so oh, always gotta thank brian for that and uh Clark to M1BCG because uh, he does some great promoting uh, for the ladies night. So thank you to the guys and the gals um, for another wonderful evening. And I will catch you ladies in two weeks, hopefully. This is KC2 UFU for ladies night. I'll still be hanging around here um, if anyone else wants to chat. Um, but other than that, everyone else have a great evening. KC2 UFU. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Two thumbs up, as always. And all you gotta do is, if you want to find the recording from the night, uh, it's, um, it will be on YouTube. Just search Ladies Night Part 3. The YLs take over 80 meter AM ham radio. <laughs> That's the name of the, uh, what's the name of the live stream? You guys did great. Good job, everyone. I'll be hanging around. Stop crashes, you know, suck, but eh, it is what it is. And they're, probably, they're right down here in Southern Maryland, so I know, uh, Brian, you're probably getting tore up from the floor up by them. Anyway, this is W3 MMR in southeastern Pennsylvania. Hold up. Uh oh. Great job, Gary. You guys sounded great, and uh, all the signals are really good in the Tompkins Cove. Yeah, static crashes, but yeah, they're just static crashes. Big deal. KC2 DHU. Great job. Yes, Kerry, you're being Hello, great live to hell. Awesome. Great job, guys. And when you left. Yeah, hello, Rob and Perry and, and, and Jim. And Kerry, hats off again there. Yeah, the static crashes are getting really nasty here. Tanya, I heard you. What was that? Good evening to you. Sounding great here in Maryland. Sounding really, really good on that radio, Tanya. So, um... Tell, tell Mike uh, that that's your seat now. Hello, Tanya. WFV. Hello, Brian and Lisa. It's me again. I was just going in there to say hello. Carrie did an outstanding job tonight, as she always does. She's good at it. Just me. Everybody was like 30 over here the entire time. Uh, W2BTK. Hey, Billy. Yeah, the static crashes are really picking up. I'll have to go look at the radar and see where in Southern Maryland uh, these things are at. Because it may be time to uh, shut everything off here. Yeah, that's what I was worried about, Brian. I didn't know where. Yeah. So, you know. Didn't want to uh, hang in there too long. Let me check this here. Oh, you did just fine. <clears throat> you just came way up, and then there was times you went way down, so. It may be uh, an evening for something else. Yeah, I'm thinking, well, if the storms aren't even here, I'm thinking about going down to the local dock and uh, maybe going to the local those suckers are getting big now. Well, w what kind of crabbing? For blue claws. Oh, I didn't hear blue claws. Okay. So you, you crab in the evenings? 
Yeah, that's the best kind of crowd. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, people do it during the day. And, I mean, they get stuff, whatever, but I like to do it in the evening. And I like, you know, it actually it was a full moon last night. So, you go along the bulkhead with a, uh, with a net, you know, a regular net, and you scrape along the bulkhead, and you, you can get soft shells. I was, I was going to say with the full moon, and you definitely got soft shells out there now. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I've ever had one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm traditionally the, the hard-shelled, boiled, red crab guy. You know? You throw some seasoning in the in the steamer, a couple of beers, you let them rip, and then uh, nice hot steamed crabs. Yeah, well, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to eat it, because I've cleaned probably a billion crabs in my life, so I know what's inside there. <laughs> but it, it really is good. And it helps the fact that when, so the hard part is when, because obviously you don't clean them, you know, you, you have to cut their face. Oh. <laughs> so that's a, that's a little, you know, a little masochistic. We'd gone out to Ocean City, Maryland one time. We stopped at a place called the Crab Mullet. And uh, this is early on when Lisa and I were still were dating. And uh, uh, we were sitting at the table there. And... Uh, I don't know what we ordered, a half a bushel, a quarter bushel, whatever, a dozen, two dozen. I don't remember what we ordered, but Lisa had this big pile of shells, and I had this little pile of shells, and the waiter came back over to check on us and says, uh, so you must not be from Maryland. I said, I, I'm born and raised in Maryland. She's from West Virginia. He laughed and walked away. That's right. We not want not. Eat them crabs. That's right. Hey, it's just funny that, uh, that here, here's this girl from the mountains of West Virginia tearing through these crabs, and I'm sitting here trying to struggle to catch up. So now, now I've learned the secret. I sit between my daughter and my wife. They pick so fast they can't possibly eat it as fast as I can steal it. Well, I was a little kid. Um, it's a great uncle. You know, housed out in Tom's River, New Jersey. And I was like, I don't know, probably like eight years old or something like that. And he had this boat, this old boat, almost like the boat they used on Jaws. And a uh, little wooden thing. And I always thought that was cool. And they used to go out crabbing with the nets and stuff like that. And I used to go out with them all gung-ho because I used to like the boat. And then when they started catching crabs, they started throwing them on the deck of the boat. And I was scared to death. These things were clicking around the floor and uh, yeah they used to call them blue claws or blue biters or something like that whatever they catch in jersey and uh i used to stand on top of the engine cover in this thing you know i was deathly afraid of these things and they'd be clacking around the floor and they'd be pulling up the nets and putting chicken in them and stuff like that that's the only thing i remember about crabs the boat was cool the crabs clicking around the floor, not so much. Casey 2 dhu Yeah, you see Thomas River, that, that's right around the corner from me, so. All in the same bay there. I can kind of remember the house, and we're kind of like up on stilts a little bit. You can see the well pump and stuff underneath it. Uh, I would have to ask my mom where it was, if she remembers where the street was. He's long gone, apparently. Was that Connor? Was that Connor? I think that was Connor. Connor wins contests, but he's not winning the contest with the lightning tonight. Connor, um... in a couple weeks. I took my whole shack apart and I moved it into my living room except for all the transmitting equipment. So I've been running control lines and coax and this and that. 
and you know, just getting this thing set up. Seems like I have this like wicked buzz on my D mod. I know I have some buzz on my transmit, but ever since I did this, like my D mod, my receiver has just this. It's uh, it's annoying, but that's what I've been up to. W two B T K. Hey, George, what was that, Jim? What was that, Jim? All right, we've got a strapping signal here tonight. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. Yeah, it's not for the, uh, being targeted tonight. It's really getting bad. Oh, I'm going to take a quick break. I've been sitting here for a little bit, but, uh... I don't know if you guys are hanging in here or not with those static crashes, but, uh, I'll be back in a little bit. If you, uh, if you guys are gonna hang around, this is Casey to you, if you. We're drawn to the static. Bye, Casey to you, if you, and Tanya W. 3 TKP. Sounding absolutely marvelous, darling. And there's Tanya rocking the frequency. Yes, I am waiting for Michael to bring me a drink, and it's not happening. I would, I would pound your fist on the table and say, hey, get with it. I believe you, copy. Yeah, go ahead, George. Go ahead, George. You made some changes. You also faded real bad during that last transmission, but, um, well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Well, I guess I need to memorize. I have to stream around the thing. Well, of course, I'm stream around the thing. I know what I I know some, um, um, what do you call it, uh, lower signal tonight, I think. Am I right? Well, you sound pretty you good sound here. You're good competing here. You're pretty well pretty with the static, static crashes, crashes, but, um, but um, like Kerry like said, you know, if you're going to come out here and talk tonight, you got to you know, be able to beat up those lightning crashes. I know, I know. Um, is my imagination okay, or should I raise it up a little bit? George, I'm sorry, but it is, I can hear you, but it's not the night to do any sort of audio uh, analysis or testing, so uh, <laughs> we'll have to do it maybe in, in the afternoon or something. Oh, your signal. Uh, go one more time. I don't have an S meter on my setup here, but I can give you an SNR, which is arguably better, uh, which I will on your next over. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, your SNR is between 35 and 40 dB, so, you know, you've got a good signal here. It's just when those lightning crashes crash up, uh, that number goes way down for a split second, and, it, you know, it makes it difficult. But 40 dB SNR, uh, you're doing great. Thank you, Billy. I broke 30, 40 over here, believe it or not. So it's right between 40 and 40 over. Okay, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Talk to you guys tomorrow when conditions are better. Have a great time. George, W2BTK. Sit there, George. Sit there, George. Sit there, George. Rough here in a year. Um, I'd say you're fickle staff seven. But the static thing is way there. Good evening. Uh, you're, um, not too bad down here. But, like, same thing with Billy. Uh, you're fine until the static crashes. I'll come in there with you. 
that's for sure. But good evening to you and Jim and Billy and anybody else who may be listening. W3MMR. <laughs> See you, George. Hey, Perry, what's hey, up? Perry, what's up? No, not much. Just hanging out, you know. Um, trying to uh, keep myself occupied. It's like really nice out. 79 degrees. Like kids are outside playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful, yeah, it's a beautiful night. night. Uh, I mowed my lawn today, so I might go out there and just hang out in the yard. It's like it's like a carpet when uh, right after I mow it. So I'll go out there in my bare feet and walk around, pull some weeds, drink some wine. I don't know. It might be a nice night to hang out outside. Um, and Perry, so I switched to uh, a capture card to capture my um, my SDR computer and pipe it into my streaming computer instead of using an NDI source. And it, it, I think it looks better and might sound better, but I'm getting this wicked echo. And I don't know where it's coming from. I'm getting double audio somehow on the stream, so it's all screwed up. I picked the hell of a night to change all my crap around, huh? Yeah, it sucks. Well, I noticed that echo before, dude. I was going to say something to you. I was thinking about it today. Because I had been... I watched, like, that W6AM one today. Uh, well, listen to it at work. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. Uh, listen to that, and then... Um, like before, uh, you know, I listened to the prior ones, and you can hear a lot of echo in there. It like drives me out of my mind. Well, that was because I had two mic sources open, and and I know why that was happening. But now I have that thing shut off, and I like I, you know, I, I gotta I gotta figure this stuff out. I might have to use some kind of. Uh, well, you know what? I don't know yet. I just kind of like plugged it all in and fired up the stream, so I'll have to do it uh, offline and figure this out, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm all fancy now, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, it's stuff you can get... I hate that, man. It's like once you change something, like everything's fine, and then you change it, and it gets screwed up for about a week or two. Maybe even three weeks sometimes when it's really screwed up. <laughs> so you get it back to normal. And then you leave it, you know, you leave it together for a while, everything's all good, and you go and screw it up again. <laughs> well, are you having, like, an echo just on your mic audio, or is it echo on both the mic audio and, like, receive audio? No, it's just when I talk, so, um... um it, n nothing to do with the receive. The receive is fine. It's just when I'm transmitting, it's it's pulling a double signal from somewhere, and I gotta figure out where the hell it's coming from. And how are you getting your hey, like? Is it demodulated audio, like demodulated audio, or is it like monitor audio from your rack, or like from your you know your your audio gear? No, it's always demodulated audio. Um, even before with the NDI source, it was, it was straight demodulated audio from the sound card of my SDR computer. And I was doing that analog before. And, or, wait, no, I was doing that over the network before. So I was getting my trans, you know, the, the receive audio and my transmit audio over the network. But now I have this capture card, so it's coming out HDMI, and then the capture card has an audio Output, audio output, I'm splitting, splitting that, that half to my half monitoring setup, setup and setup half to feed half the, stream. the stream. So it might have so something to do with that. I, I'm not too I'm sure, not but, too um, but um, you know, like I said, I literally said plugged I literally all this crap, all crap in and started the stream up five minutes later. 
Well, what are you... So you're running like a separate monitor from the stream audio monitor? Like you're... Did, did, did I get did I get that right? No, it's it's no, just it's whatever is coming out of my SDR, you know. So when I'm transmitting, I hear myself. When I'm not transmitting, I hear you guys, and that's it. It just pipes to my computer. Then I also have I'm using the right channel of my audio processor to feed analog audio to the sound card of this computer, which I have muted most of the time um, in case I want to talk to the chat without being keyed up. Otherwise, like my mic is dead unless I'm transmitting, but I can unmute this one source and talk to chat straight from my audio rack, but all that stuff's muted right now. I'm still getting an echo. I got you now, okay. It all makes sense now. I don't know why then. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> you know, um, now just, you know, being able to comprehend what you got going on, let alone trying to troubleshoot it. <laughs> um, without being there yet. But cool. Well, hopefully you get it figured out. I'm sure you will. Let me, uh, Billy. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. stuff once I dump this stream, but I have a feeling that it's like um, audio coming over the H, like, because I'm using the analog output of this capture card, the audio output, and then there's also, like, HDMI involved, which, you know, carries audio as well, so I think it might be sending that over USB or some, some weird crap, and I, you know, I just need to spend a little time with it. Yeah, like I said, this is brand new. But anyways, guys, I think I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get off the air and go outside and uh, like do something. So you know, it was a real fun chatting with all you guys. I was listening to Ladies Night and um, all that good stuff. And yeah, fine business. So uh, I'll, I'll see y'all later. W two B T K on Montana Mountain. See ya, Bill. Yeah, see you, Billy. And hi, Clark. Billy, have a great night, man. Sounded good up here. Yeah, it is a beautiful night. And, uh, hey, you ran a lot of stuff in a long time. A lot of wind. Trouble doing eh, screw that later. AC2DHO, good night. Good luck. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for tonight's stream. Thanks for, uh, oh, let me turn this down. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Uh, hopefully you thought that Ladies Night Net was interesting, and uh, we'll be firing up the stream again tomorrow. I'll do some ham radio, uh, AM activity. Hey, see you later, Connor. And, um, yes, that's, well, not quite, Connor. It's about, like, three 350 watts carrier over here. Um, but anyway, I'll see you guys later. Um, if you're not following the channel, you know, hit the follow button. Uh, it'll let you know when I go live in case you want to come back and uh, watch again. So 
that would be pretty cool. And hey, 350, I'll see you later, man. And uh, yeah, I, I hope I get that thing figured out too. I, you know, I just need to spend a little bit of time with it. Uh, brand new stuff. I'm, I'm always trying to improve the stream. You know, I'm getting new hardware, getting a little fancier when I can. So, um, you know, I just want to bring you guys good content. So, whoa. Uh, I'm getting a phone call here. So, hey, I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Thanks for hanging out with me.